Leah, uh, you and I have had a very complementary approach to consciousness in that I've looked at a very large number of, of theories, but very thinly on each. You've looked at a much fewer number, but very deeply on those. Um, so I, I want to reflect on something that I've been trying to ask myself, and that is to look at a theory of consciousness and look at the whole field. How can we talk about theories that are necessary for consciousness and theories that are sufficient for consciousness? And how do the two articulate? Because I can think of theories that are necessary for consciousness but are not sufficient. And I, I may be able to think of theories that are sufficient and not necessary. <laughs> The question of necessity and sufficiency in theories of consciousness is a complicated one. One thing that is interesting to observe is that I, th I would, I think, maybe I'm mischaracterizing the theories, but if I had to put my money on it, I think that most of the proponents of the theories would say that they are doing both. So they are both necessary and sufficient to explain consciousness. So for example, when Lucia Meloni and I um, um, hosted the great debate of theories of consciousness at the ASCC meeting a few years ago. Um, we heard from the proponents of the theories there that their theories provide the full story. So for example, if you think about the recurrent processing theory by Victor Lame, he is, says that recurrent processes are necessary for consciousness. And I think that most theories would actually align with that claim. But he claims that they are also sufficient for consciousness mm -hmm. and that all the other processes that are related to access, to report, maybe to task performance, are already additional processes that are not part of the core phenomenal consciousness that he tries to explain. So he would tell you that what other theories consider to be only a necessary condition is also sufficient. Mm -hmm. And similarly, if you think about global neuronal workspace, then they would tell you that broadcasting of information is both necessary and sufficient for consciousness. Clearly, IIT is built on a necessity and sufficiency based on their uh, opinion. And I, I think that you could say that for, for other theories as well, higher order thought and, and others. Um, so I'm not sure that the theories themselves make this distinction. And I think that they would, most of them at least. So I completely agree that everyone who has a theory thinks that it is both <laughs> necessary and sufficient. I mean, this is a characteristic of human nature. If they didn't think that, they wouldn't do it. Right. Um, now, you and I are sitting above all this because you and I Correct. don't particularly have our own pet theory. We're yeah. looking at the broad spectrum of what the best humanity has to offer at, at this point. Right. Right. So it's up to us uh, I agree. to say what might be necessary because I can really think of, 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 of possibilities that are necessary. But even if I went outside physicalism and had some dualist or idealist, uh, panpsychism, whatever theory, I would still say that some things are still necessary, but they certainly wouldn't be sufficient. So if I'm a dualist, the panpsychist, the idealist, I would still say in terms of human consciousness, you need the reticular activating system or something to, to at least give you that. So that's necessary, but it doesn't explain it, even yeah. if I'm a, a panpsychist. So that's an important point. I'm neither of those things. Of course. And my discussion is well I wouldn't rooted within you of that. the. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> I started as a dualist when I was younger, okay. but I changed my mind. In fact, my, my PhD in philosophy was aimed at asking whether a neuroscientist can be a dualist, if there is a contradiction in a way between uh -huh. the praxis and the ontological yeah, standards Yeah, you take. that's very good, because that's similar to what I've just asked, because you'd still have a, a, neuro a neurobiological necessity, even though it wasn't sufficient. So my stand then and now is that the answer to your question would never come from scientific investigation. So if you belong to one of those uh, theorists, which is completely fine, then I don't think there is any empirical evidence that I can show you that would convince you that this is both necessary and sufficient. No, I, I agree you with that. You would always say, okay, okay, that's fine, but you need the uh, added course, ingredient, which is immaterial, and that's, and that's why it's not sufficient. And but therefore, it's, it's not a scientific question. I completely agree with that. Yeah. I, I want to ask, though, the, the other direction, though. 
assuming that's the case, assuming you are a dualist, that you didn't change your mind, you didn't go to the dark side, you stayed, <laughs> you stayed on the light well, side. I, I don't like to color theories no, no, or I'm I'm uh, ontological positions in colors. Uh, yeah, okay. Both of them could be dark and okay, positive. Right, okay, fair, okay, fair enough. But still, there would be some uh, neurobiological necessities, even if you are a dualist or a panpsychist. You, 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 you have to have a brain, and maybe you do, maybe some Depends. people think I you guess don't. Some, some people, people would say maybe that's even yeah, not needed. Of course, needed. of course. So that's what I'm asking. Is right. What are the necessary conditions for consciousness, irrespective of your big picture of consciousness? Right. In other words, what are some of the things that has to be there? That, that's the word, that's the philosophical necessity. Right. You can't have consciousness without this, even though it, it's not sufficient. So aside from the kind of enabling conditions like you know, a functioning brain, uh, currently at least as far as we know, we know a body and so on, sensory organs and so on and so forth, although you could think maybe on different cases where this would not be necessary. Um, that's, I think that's one of the key questions. Because we don't have an agreed upon account, I don't think that we as a field converge neither on the necessary nor on the sufficient conditions. I think that, as I said before, recurrent processing is probably one of the most promising candidates for a necessary condition. Most of the theories that I'm familiar with assume some kind of feedback loops, not only feedforward processing. So this to me sounds like a relatively sure bet. But from that to committing to necessary and sufficient conditions, I am not there yet. Mm -hmm.